Request for a recorded vote on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Iowa, Mr. King, on which further proceedings were postponed, on which the ayes prevailed by voice vote. Clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. King of Iowa. A vote has been requested. Those in support of a request for a recorded vote will rise and be counted. A sufficient number having risen, a recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This will be a two-minute vote. This is the second of nine amendment votes to the fiscal year 2013 spending bill for the Energy Department and for water projects, just over $32 billion. So seven more amendment votes will follow this, uh, this vote on Steve King of Iowa and his amendment to the, uh, the uh, spending bill. It's not likely that the House will finish work on bill this afternoon. Coming up this afternoon, some political coverage on our, com on our companion network, C-SPAN 2, President Obama is in Minneapolis today. He's speaking this afternoon at the Honeywell facility talking about his to-do list, calling on Congress to pass legislation that creates a Veterans Jobs, jobs Corps, and that is coming up this afternoon at 110 Eastern. Again, that'll be live on C-SPAN 2, and some political coverage tonight here on C-SPAN with the um, uh, Wisconsin Governor's debate, a match between the recall match between Scott Walker, the incumbent, and also Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett. That's tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern. On this vote, the yeas are 203, the nays are 185. The amendment is agreed to. The unfinished business is the request for a recorded vote on the amendment by the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Moran, on which further proceedings were postponed, on which the ayes prevailed by a voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Moran of Virginia. The recorded vote has been requested. Those in support of a request for a recorded vote shall rise and be counted. A sufficient number having risen, a recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This will be a two-minute vote. This is the fiscal year 2013 spending bill for the Energy Department and for water projects. Nine amendment votes here. This amendment by Jim Moran of Virginia would strike language from the bill which bars the Army Corps of Engineers from implementing regulatory guidance regarding the definition of waters under the Clean Water Act.
152. The nays are 237. The amendment is not agreed to. The unfinished business is the request for a recorded vote on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Holcren, on which further proceedings were postponed, on which the ayes prevailed by a voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Holcren of Illinois. Recorded vote has been requested. Those in support of the re request for a recorded vote shall rise and be counted. A sufficient number having risen, a recorded vote is ordered. Member will record their votes by electronic device. This will be a two-minute vote. And this is the fourth of nine amendment votes to the fiscal year 2013 Energy Department and Water Projects Bill, the spending bill for 2013. You may recall last week when Majority Leader Eric Cantor posted his memo to House members about the schedule, the planned schedule, or the proposed schedule for the summer, among the issues that he hoped to get done before Father's Day, before June 17th, include spending bills. And he mentions the Homeland Security Appropriations Bill and possibly also legislative branch. But it appears that the House won't finish work on this particular bill, the Energy and Water Bill, today, and we'll move that uh, for final completion into next week. On this vote, the yeas are 130, the nays are 256. The amendment is not agreed to. The unfinished business is a request for a recorded vote on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Utah, Mr. Chaffetz, on which further proceedings were postponed, on which the noes prevailed by voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Chaffetz of Utah. A recorded vote has been requested. Those in support of a request for a recorded vote shall rise and be counted. A sufficient number having risen. A recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This will be a two-minute vote. The House is voting on amendments to the Energy and Water Spending Bill for 2013. This one just over $32 billion. CQ reports that the bill increases funding for the nation's nuclear weapons stockpile, fossil fuel programs, and nuclear energy research and development. They also write that funding would be reduced in the underlying bill for the Army Corps of Engineers projects, energy department science programs, defense and non-defense environmental cleanup activities, nuclear non-proliferation programs, and most renewable energy programs, including solar, wind, water, and geothermal programs.
On this vote, the yeas are 140, the nays are 245. The amendment is not agreed to. The unfinished business is a request for a recorded vote on amendment number six, printed in the congressional record, offered by the gentleman from California, Mr. McClintock, in which further proceedings were postponed and on which the nays prevailed by a voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment number six, printed in the congressional record, offered by Mr. McClintock of California. Recorded vote has been requested. Those in support of a request for a recorded vote shall rise and be counted. Sufficient number having risen, a recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their vo votes by electronic device. This will be a two-minute vote. What were they yelling about back there? This is the uh, spending bill for 2013 for the Energy Department and for federal water projects. Tom McClintock of California with an amendment that would eliminate funding provided for renewable energy programs, $1.5 billion, which includes an appropriation of $115 million that would remain available through fiscal year 2014. A similar cost-cutting measure failed earlier. Peter Kasparowitz of the Hill writes that the House rejected an amendment from uh, Paul Brown of Georgia that would have cut $27 million from the energy and water bill, and his amendment would have cut 3% of administrative salaries through the uh, 2013 spending uh, uh, fiscal year. On this vote, the yeas are 113, the nays are 275. The amendment is not agreed to. The unfinished business is the request for a recorded vote on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Ohio, Ms. Capture, on which further proceedings were postponed, on which the ayes prevailed by voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment offered by Ms. Capture of Ohio. A recorded vote has been requested. Those in support of the request for a recorded vote will rise and be counted, a sufficient number having risen. Recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their vote by electronic device. This is a two-minute vote. The House yesterday passed the 2013 Military Construction Veterans Affairs Spending Bill. The vote there was 407 to 12. Today they've been working on the amendments to the, the 2013 spending bill for the Energy Department and for federal water projects. 
three more, two more amendment votes after this one. News this morning from the Labor Department about unemployment in the month of May. The number ticked up a bit from 8.1 to 8.2 percent. It's the first increase in 11 months. Uh, U.S. employers adding 69,000 jobs in May, according to the uh, Labor Department. And lots of reaction on Capitol Hill as well. We covered several uh, briefings, including Speaker Boehner and Republican leaders, Nancy Pelosi and uh, Steny Hoyer. And we also heard from a Budget Committee Chairman Paul Ryan and the ranking member Chris Van Hollen. And we'll show you all of that later in our program schedule. And you can certainly find it in our video library at cspan.org. On this vote, the yeas are 183, the nays are 200. The amendment is not agreed to. The unfinished business is a request for a recorded vote on the amendment offered by the gentleman from New York, Mr. Tonko, on which further proceedings were postponed and on which the noes prevailed by a voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Tonko of New York. A recorded vote has been requested. Those in support of a request for a recorded vote shall rise and be counted. A sufficient number having risen, a recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This is a two-minute vote. Democrat Paul Tonko of New York with an amendment to the $32 billion spending bill for the Energy Department and federal water, water uh, projects in uh, 2013. Just to let you know about some of our upcoming live coverage on the C-SPAN networks, President Obama is in Minneapolis this afternoon. He'll be speaking at the Honeywell Golden Valley facility, talking about jobs. He's calling on Congress to pass uh, the Veterans Jobs Corps legislation. His comments live on C-SPAN 2 coming up this afternoon at 1.10. Here on C-SPAN this evening, political coverage from Wisconsin in the governor's debate, the recall election, Scott Walker, the incumbent, Republican, and Democrat Tom Barrett, the mayor of Milwaukee. We'll have that for you tonight at 8 Eastern.
148. The nays are 236. The amendment is not agreed to. The unfinished business is a request for a recorded vote on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Hahn, on which further proceedings were postponed and on which the noes prevailed by voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment offered by Ms. Hahn of California. Recorded vote has been requested. Those in support of the request for recorded vote shall rise and be counted. A sufficient number having risen, recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their vote by electronic device. This will be a two-minute vote. Janice Hahn's amendment is likely the uh, is certainly the last vote in this series and likely the last recorded vote of the week. The House is not expected to finish work on this spending bill, the Energy and Water Spending Bill, and should finish it up next week. Also likely in the next week or so, more spending bills, including Homeland Security and the Legislative Branch Spending Bill. The Senate has been off all week, but they return on Tuesday, June 5th, 2.15 Eastern, and they will move to um, take a vote on whether to proceed to the so-called Paycheck Fairness Bill. Live coverage of the Senate is on C-SPAN 2. Again, they're back next Tuesday. Vote. The yeas are 139, the nays are 245. The amendment is not agreed to. The purpose of the gentleman from New Jersey, rise. Um, Madam Chair, I move that the committee now do rise. The question is on the motion that the committee rise. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Accordingly, the committee rises. Do I go? Uh, Madam Chair. You too. Uh, the Chair of the Committee of the Whole House on the State of the Union reports that the Committee has had under co consideration H.R. 5325 and has come to no uh, resolution thereon.
Um, the chair lays before the House the following personal requests. Leaves of absence requested for Mr. Clyburn of South Carolina for today, Ms. McCollum of Minnesota for today, Mr. Schilling of Illinois for today, and Mr. Young of Florida for today. Without uh, objection, the requests are granted. For what purpose does the uh, gentleman from Maryland uh, seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to speak out of order for one minute for the purposes of inquiring of the majority leader the schedule for the week to come. Without objection. Thank you, uh, Mr. The Speaker. Gentleman from Maryland, the Democratic whip. Oh. I'll yield. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank I thank you for thanking me for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thanking me for thanking you. Uh, thank the gentleman from Maryland, the Democratic Whip, for yielding to me. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on Monday, the House is not in session. On Tuesday, the House will meet at noon for morning hour and 2 p.m. for legislative business. Votes will be postponed until 6.30 p.m. On Wednesday and Thursday, the House will meet at 10 a.m. for morning hour and noon for legislative business. On Friday, the House will meet at 9 a.m. for legislative business. Last votes of the week are expected no later than 3 p.m. Mr. Speaker, the House will consider a number of bills under suspension of the rules, a complete list of which will be announced by the close of business today. I expect the majority of these bills to come from the Natural Resources Committee, and I want to thank Chairman Doc Hastings and his staff for their tireless work in assisting members on both sides of the aisle with their bills to responsibly remove federal red tape that stands in the way of local economic development. Members are also advised that the House will resume consideration of H.R. 5325, the Energy and Water Development Appropriations Act, on Tuesday, our first day back next week. Those wishing to offer amendments to the bill should be prepared to do so as soon as they return to Washington. The House may also consider two additional appropriations bills next week, H.R. 5855, the Department of Homeland Security Appropriations Act, sponsored by Representative Robert Adderholt and H.R. 5882, the Legislative Branch Appropriations Act, sponsored by Representative Andrew Crenshaw. Chairman Hal Rogers and the entire Appropriations Committee on both sides of the aisle 
should be congratulated, con congratulated for helping to restore the open process of allocating and priorita prioritizing the nation's spending. Finally, Mr. Speaker, the House will consider H.R. 436, the Protect Medical Innovation Act, a very important bill for jobs and innovation in the medical device industry and rep that Representative Eric Paulson has sponsored. The Paulson bill will be combined with H.R. 5842, the Restoring Access to Medication Act, sponsored by Representative Lynn Jenkins, and H.R. 1004, the Medical FSA Improvement Act, sponsored by Representative Charles Bustani. And with that, I thank the gentleman and yield back. I thank the gentleman for that information. Uh, and I want to make a comment. The gentleman correctly uh, congratulated the appropriations uh, leadership on his side of the aisle. But I also want to observe that uh, uh, on our side of the aisle, uh, there has been cooperation. Uh, and there has not been an effort to either delay or dissemble. Uh, and that is why this process works. That's the way it should work. Uh, it hasn't always been that way, as the gentleman knows, but I'm pleased that it is working. I think that's uh, best for our institution. I think it's best for the country. Uh, so I'm pleased at that as well. Uh, I tell my friend, and he knows this, uh, according to the schedule I have, the House is scheduled to be in session a total of 28 days until the August break and 41 days from now until November. Uh, in addition, uh, of those days available, uh, of the 41, 10 are 6.30 uh, days in which we come in uh, for an abbreviated uh, evening session, which usually takes a half an hour to an hour uh, to conclude after uh, the afternoon debate on suspension bills. Uh, I, I express uh, that concern. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the gallery is not in order. The gentleman is correct. The House will be in order. <coughs> uh, with the limited time we have available, uh, Mr. Leader, uh, I am very concerned, uh, as the gentleman knows, uh, of the extraordinarily uh, large number of very big fiscal questions that will be coming uh, to roost uh, uh, at the end of this year. Uh, my view is that uh, we need to address those. Hopefully we need to address them in a bipartisan way uh, because if we do not address them, uh, we will put the economy at continuing risk. Uh, the Bush tax cuts, as you know, uh, expire as of the 30th of the, uh, December, 31st of December. Uh, the uh, payroll tax cut expires 31st of <coughs> December. The uh, sustainable growth rate, we which we affectionately refer to as the dock fix, the alternative minimum tax, uh, the debt limit, uh, and all come to bear at the end of the year. In addition to that, the uh, sequester, which I think all of us believe is not the appropriate way to go, but is the way we set up to force us to take action on a comprehensive, big, bold, balanced plan. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the super committee was unable to uh, reach agreement on that. Uh, I wanted to say to my friend, the majority leader, uh, I would hope that uh, uh, you would be uh, urging all of us. Uh, I will uh, join with you in that effort, early, urging all of us uh, to be ready to make some tough decisions, but decisions which need to be made in order to stabilize our economy uh, and stabilize the fiscal posture of the United States. I am hopeful that we can reach a credible uh, sustainable fiscal path uh, for our country. And the only way we're going to do that is if we work together in a bipartisan fashion. <clears throat> the gentleman and I were very successful in working on the uh, Export-Import Bank uh, legislation in a bipartisan fashion in which we got over 300 votes on the floor of the House for. Uh, the gentleman was unable to make the signing, but it was signed this week. I think a very positive step forward. And I appreciate the gentleman's work on that piece of legislation, but uh, I would uh, like to uh, uh, urge the gentleman that uh, because of the f extraordinarily short number of days that we have left uh, to meet, uh, to uh, focus on what I think is going to be, a, some people call it a fiscal train wreck, some people call it a 
fiscal perfect storm. Some people call it a, a fiscal cliff. Whatever you call it, it clearly will have a great impact on uh, not only uh, the confidence that Americans have in this body and the Senate uh, to uh, work and to make uh, effective plans for uh, meeting that challenge, but also for getting our country on a fiscally sustainable path. I don't know whether the gentleman has any comments on that, but I would glad to, be glad to yield to him. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I thank the gentleman and uh, agree with him that all of us should be very focused on uh, the, the months <coughs> ahead as we approach the date at which this country will, uh, by operation of law, experience the largest tax increase in its history, uh, that the sequester will be imposed, uh, that we perhaps will face another debt ceiling uh, vote, as well as the many other items the gentleman mentioned. And I think all of us understand the gravity of those issues. I think, Mr. Speaker, we've also seen in operation around here, uh, together with the White House, uh, the difficulties that the two sides have had in coming together on two very important issues that run throughout all of the matters that the gentleman mentioned, and those two issues are health care and taxes. And as the gentleman knows, uh, we have put forward uh, a solution uh, to the health care entitlement issue, which is the uh, disproportionate cause of the unfunded liabilities of the federal budget. And uh, the gentleman and the president and his party uh, have rejected uh, our solution that has been validated by the Congressional Budget Office as an actual fix to the deficit. But to date, we have not seen any counterproposal with the gentleman and his party or the president coming to the table saying, here's how we would fix it. All we continue to hear, Mr. Speaker, is we, we need to raise taxes, and we need to raise more taxes on people who have been successful. And the gentleman knows that those are the two issues, the taxes and the health care fix, that we've just had real difficulty in trying to come together. And so what I would say to the gentleman, we remain ready to work with him and his colleagues on that other side of the aisle to try and produce a result for the American people so we can re-inject some certainty back into the minds of the American people that the economy is going to get better. And, and again, we've tried to focus on issues having to do with growth in the private sector. How do, we, how do we speak to that small businessman or woman who's having difficulty now assessing what his or her taxes are going to be? How do we speak to that working mother there when she questions whether her health care will still be available given the uncertainty around the Obamacare bill? These are the kinds of things we're trying to work on together since so many other things elude us because the gulf is so wide in philosophically dealing with taxes and health care. Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, we remain ready to work with the gentleman. Uh, we share the concern about what lies ahead. I yield back. I thank the gentleman. Uh, I, I was not trying to make political uh, points or rhetoric uh, in raising the issues I did. I, I frankly think that. Uh, uh, it doesn't get us very far, I would suggest to the majority leader. Uh, and it's a, we need to get someplace. America expects us to get someplace. Uh, many of your members have indicated that uh, uh, revenues need to be on the table. Uh, the, the gentleman uh, knows that every bipartisan commission that's dealt with this says revenues need to be on the table. They say entitlements need to be on the table. Uh, neither are easy to deal with. Uh, but they must be dealt with if we're going to be responsible stewards of this nation's finances and this nation's future. Uh, and uh, political rhetoric's not going to get us there. Uh, f frankly, points that uh, uh, we all want to help small business. We believe we've helped small business very substantially. And uh, very frankly, uh, if you get into the analysis, small businesses did very well during the Clinton administration under policies that uh, were in place at that point in time. Uh, but that aside, uh, we need to deal with this. And I think a number of members on your side have, in fact, indicated that they understand that everything needs to be on the table. And uh, that is what I think as well. Um, I think both sides have things that they don't want to deal with. Uh, but Americans expect us to deal with tough things and make tough decisions uh, on behalf of them and behalf of their children, behalf of their families. And uh, which leads me to uh, 
on, on small business and economic growth, uh, the highway bill. Uh, we continue to be very concerned, Mr. Majority Leader, that uh, uh, we have not reached agreement on the highway bill. The Senate was able to reach an overwhelmingly bipartisan agreement on the highway bill, which is a jobs bill. Uh, I was disappointed. Uh, I, I hope the gentleman was disappointed at the jobs numbers that came out today. Uh, 82,000 in the private sector, lost 13,000 in the public sector, net 69,000 jobs. That does not get us to where we want to be after losing uh, millions and millions of jobs in the previous administration and losing uh, a substantial number of jobs in this uh, administration before. Over the last uh, 26 months, we've grown 4 million jobs, but the hole was very deep, and we're not out of it. If you don't have a job, you know we're not out of it. Uh, but I would hope that uh, we could at least, uh, with uh, certainly our, our side believing that the highway bill is a jobs bill. Uh, Ray LaHood, as I pointed out in the past, your former leader in your party uh, and chairman of a subcommittee in the Appropriations Committee, uh, says that it's uh, a jobs bill, but uh, uh, unfortunately concludes that, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, that bill is not passing. He believes for largely political reasons. I hope that's not the case and don't assert it to be the case. But uh, uh, do you have any idea of uh, how we're what kind of progress we're making on the highway bill so that that bill can come to the floor before the June 30th uh, expiration of the highway bill uh, authorization? I yield to my friend. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd say to the gentleman, uh, as he knows, the House has passed its bill, the Senate has passed its conference has been appointed, uh, and obviously we're very mindful, as is he, of the expiration of the current authorizing language in, at law, and uh, we're prepared to make sure that uh, there is no stoppage uh, of uh, transportation programming and funding, uh, all the while desiring a much longer-term uh, solution to the problem. I think the problem remains, as the gentleman knows. Um, just not enough money to address all the things uh, and, uh, that the country is, um, is experiencing in terms of the needs for roads and infrastructure repair, uh, as well as the needed expansion. And as the gentleman knows, um, we all are mindful of uh, the limited resources uh, that are available to address these needs and just trying to prioritize. And I'm hopeful that the conference committee uh, can come to a solution prior to the expiration of the authorizing language in place right now. Uh, but again, very mindful. We don't want to allow uh, for any uh, 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 shutdown of any program uh, at the end of this month. I yield back. I thank the gentleman. I appreciate his observation. Uh, clearly, we don't want to uh, have the authority for the highway bill to expire without action. Uh, but I will. Uh, reiterate my offer uh, to my friend, the Majority Leader, and say that uh, given the bipartisan, the overwhelming bipartisan uh, support of the bill that was, uh, came from the other party, uh, that uh, if we brought that bill to the floor, uh, I, I would tell the gentleman that I think that we will have the overwhelming, perhaps unanimous uh, support, which would be 190 votes on our side of the aisle for that bill because we believe it is a jobs bill. We believe it will grow the economy. It will pe put people back to work. Uh, and it will uh, give confidence to the American people, as we did with the Export-Import Bank, in my view, uh, give confidence to the American people that we can come together uh, and move forward uh, through reaching agreement. Obviously, the Senate was able to do that. And they did it overwhelmingly with over half of the uh, Republican conference uh, or caucus uh, voting for it uh, in the Senate and three-quarters of the Senate voting for it. Uh, I would say to my friend, I think that would be a real shot in the arm for the economy. And I agree with the gentleman. Certainty is important. Confidence uh, building is important. And if we did that, in my view, uh, and if you could uh, bring uh, uh, half of your caucus uh, to that vote, we would pass that bill overwhelmingly, and I think it would be a very positive step for the economy, a very positive step for the confidence of the American people and our economy, and put people back to work. I don't know whether the gentleman wants to comment on that uh, further, but uh, if he does, I'll yield to him.
No, no. Okay. I, thank you, Ms. Chair, Ms. Speaker. I said, gentlemen, I have no further okay. comment. Uh, uh, lastly, if I might, uh, the uh, s student loan uh, interest rate, as you know, will go up uh, at the end of this uh, month uh, from 3.4 uh, to 6.8 percent. That will add additional, substantially additional cost to uh, literally millions of students, some $1,000 uh, uh, additional cost to most students at a time when we want to make higher education so necessary for uh, success in our country, uh, available to as many people as we possibly can so that we can be competitive worldwide. And, uh, and from our perspective, uh, uh, further a Make It in America agenda uh, of growing our economy and getting jobs for our people. Uh, I know that, uh, that there was opposition to that reduction uh, when it was originally on the floor in 2007. Uh, and I know there was some opposition to it earlier this year, but I also know that uh, uh, I think both you and the Speaker have indicated now that, that they support that. We passed legislation on this floor, which uh, brought that down. There was uh, obviously very substantial uh, dis disagreement and uh, controversy with reference to the funding source, uh, given the uh, uh, prevention, preventive health fund that was used to fund the student aid. Uh, can the gentleman tell me uh, whether or not uh, he believes there's a possibility for us to uh, reach agreement on how to do this? I know the uh, speaker said this was a, quote, phony fight, uh, but uh, it is a real fight, and it will have real consequences if we don't resolve uh, our differences. Can the gentleman comment on what he believes to be the uh, possibility of reaching agreement with the Senate on the uh, student loan bill? I yield to my friend. Uh, I thank the gentleman, Mr. Speaker, and I would say to the gentleman that uh, the Speaker and I, together with the Republican uh, leader and whip in the Senate, have sent a letter to the President, perhaps the gentleman has seen it, uh, suggesting a way forward on the issue of student loans so that there will not be uh, an expiration of the subsidy provided to students. Uh, we suggested two options to allow for the continuation of the lower rates for students uh, to be paid for uh, by provisions which the President has suggested that he would agree to. Uh, the two options are uh, to limit the length of in-school interest subsidy and the other is to revise the Medicaid provider tax threshold and to phase it down uh, so that we can actually achieve some savings so that we can allow for the continuation of the subsidized rates for students who are struggling under tuition bills. These are two options that uh, we suggest. They are bipartisan in nature. There shouldn't be any reason why we couldn't get this done prior to the expiration uh, of the current law. I yield back. I thank the gentleman, and just for his information, I would be a, a very strong opponent of your first option uh, which continues to want to reduce the uh, take-home pay of federal employees. Uh, federal employees under the uh, uh, plans that you have passed through this House uh, will uh, have already been asked to pay $105 billion in reduction in pay and benefits, $105 billion over 10 years, $10 billion per year. Uh, you're suggesting that our employees uh, have uh, their pay reduced, uh, effectively net home net take-home pay reduced. Uh, in addition, uh, additional proposal on your reconcil reconciliation bill, which would add another $78 billion to that, $183 billion in total, or $18.3 billion per year, reduction in pay and benefits for federal employees. Uh, the gentleman in his state has a lot of uh, those federal employees. Uh, they happen to be civilian employees. I know the gentleman supported the pay raise for the military personnel, which I support it as well. And the gentleman is aware that uh, largely through my tenure in the Congress, uh, we've uh, treated our, our civilian uh, employees and our, fed and our military employees with parity. Uh, I would hope that the gentleman would not think that continuing to go to the uh, federal employee as we go to no other employees. The gentleman not interested in asking anybody else to participate more in paying uh, for this in terms of revenues. 
uh, but uh, uh, your side has been continuing to propose reducing the pay and benefits of federal employees. My view is, and I've said this publicly, that if we can reach a big, bold, balanced deal, uh, and it's balanced, but just going to one pocket, one group of people uh, who uh, studies show, uh, depending upon what level you're working at, uh, many are not paid comparable to their private sector, uh, some others are, it is not a fair, balanced way to proceed. And I would hope that that option would be uh, not on the table. I will certainly, I know the administration put it on the table for a larger deal, um, but uh, I would, I'm going to urge uh, uh, that uh, that not be an option. I know that uh, I've talked to some of your uh, side from your state uh, who believe that's not an option that ought to be pursued. As a matter of fact, one of them voted against the Milcon bill yesterday because of uh, a provision dealing with further reducing the pay of federal employees, the net take-home pay of federal employees. So I would hope that would not be an option. And I would hope that we could, in fact, reach an option so that we could contain uh, the cost of college uh, for young people because that's not only good for them, it's good for the competitive uh, stature of the United States of America. Uh, with respect to uh, uh, the reconciliation bill that you mentioned and the uh, uh, you mentioned the fact that uh, you were dealing with uh, the deficit, in fact, as the gentleman knows, in terms of your health care uh, provisions, they do not, within the next 20 years, uh, get the federal budget to balance in the Ryan budget, so that although you deal with that in some respects, it doesn't get us to balance, uh, and therefore does not, in my opinion, give the confidence and certainty that the American economy needs and that American citizens uh, need. Uh, and uh, I want to ask the gentleman, uh, lastly, if he expects all 12 appropriation bills, I know we're going to do the energy and water, we've now already done uh, two of our bills, whether or not he expects all 12 appropriation bills to be on the floor, considered uh, and completed prior to the August break. I yield to my friend. Uh, I thank the gentleman, and if I could, Mr. Speaker, just to uh, point the gentleman's attention back to the student loan issue. Uh, I specifically did not offer up the option of the federal employee pay for because I do know that we have a difference on that. So that the gentleman went and explained the differences. We understand that. That's why we're trying to avoid differences and come together where we can agree, which is why I discussed the two other provisions which are bipartisan in nature and that the President has said he supports, which could, in a responsible fashion, allow us to continue the lower rates. Well, well, if, so, my friend, if my friend will, uh, I don't want to interrupt me, other than to clarify, as I understand the two options, one was the option of uh, making additional uh, in the letter I read, maybe I'm uh, incorrect. Nope. If, uh, so if you can correct me. Uh, right. I'll yield back. I, I would, Mr. Speaker, there were two options. One was the federal employee paid for in and of itself would take care of, I mean, the reductions uh, in the size of the federal government uh, would have taken care of the pay for, if you will, for the student loan issue. The other option was composed of two different provisions both of which are bipartisan in nature, the President says he supports. One of those is to limit the length of in-school interest subsidies. The other was to revise the Medicaid provider tax threshold. It is those two components that comprise option two. That, that, that is my point. Okay. And, and so there is... I thank, the, I thank the gentleman for his clarification. Right. So, uh, so uh, to, to the point of, uh, I'm not quite sure about the, uh, the, the note he made about our budget, not balancing within the budget window. And I would say to the gentleman, we understand that, but it is a plan that we could adopt that would provide a blueprint for getting us back on track as far as managing down the debt and deficit. And my point originally was, Mr. Speaker, there's been no such plan. There's been no such proffer from the President or the gentleman's side of the aisle. And so in order for us to move forward, we need participation from both sides. We can't just have one side pro providing a solution without the ability to get that solution uh, put into place because the gentleman's party is in control in the other body and the White House. 
So how do we go about trying to find commonality if there is no proffer of solution? That, that was my point, Mr. Speaker, and there has been no solution, balanced or not, provided by the other side. And I would say lastly to the gentleman's uh, uh, inquiry about the appropriations process, we certainly maintain the position we'd like to see all of our bills brought to the floor through regular order, consistent with the Speaker's policy of an open debate that we have seen thus far on the appropriations bills. We had a successful completion yesterday, and we are continuing in the energy and water appropriations uh, measure uh, today and as we come back next week. And I yield back. I thank the gentleman for uh, uh, that information. I want to say to the gentleman, uh, I would disagree that there's no plan. Uh, Mr. Van Hollen, the ranking member of the